Now, in some states, they have uh, given a certain number of, uh, I think it's nanograms in the body, and New Jersey doesn't have that type of cutoff. So, um, you know, I guess first, does tolerance play a part in the effects of marijuana on an individual's ability to drive? And if it does, then, um, you know, is that something that should be taken into consideration? Uh, so, yes, there is some tolerance to the effects of marijuana. And that, in fact, is why, uh, in my opinion, at least, it's uh, that those per se levels um, uh, for, for THC, the active component in, in marijuana, uh, are not such a good idea because not everybody is affected the same way with the given concentration of THC in their blood. But what's probably more important with respect to um, the, the lack of utility of a per se level is uh, the kinetics of the drug. So if somebody smokes or somebody I beg your pardon, drinks alcohol, um, on average, they can eliminate or, or metabolize about the equivalent of one drink per hour. So over a period of an hour or a couple of hours, a person's blood alcohol concentration doesn't change uh, dramatically, and it, it changes in a predictable way. When somebody uh, smokes marijuana, um, the concentration of marijuana in the blood drops precipitously. So within about um, 15 minutes after the end of smoking, uh, the person's the level of THC in the person's blood has fallen about 60% from what it was at its peak. So over that period of 15 minutes, a drop of about 60%. So when you extend that out, uh, after about 30 minutes, it's fallen to about 20% of the peak. And if you think about in a traffic investigation or a traffic arrest, how long does it take to get that blood sample from the person? It's typically going to be uh, 90 minutes, an hour to 90 minutes or longer, depending on where uh, the arrest takes place and, and how far they are from somewhere where blood can be drawn. So the level of THC that you're measuring in the person's blood bears no relation to what it was at the time they were actually driving. So um, that's um, uh, the reason why uh, that number is really not that helpful in terms of uh, identifying people who are under the, the influence. And that's why I come back to the importance of of having a way of documenting the person's appearance, demeanor, their performance in uh, psychomotor tests uh, as a way to determine whether they were impaired. Uh, there's still enough THC left in the blood after a couple of hours to demonstrate that the person was exposed, uh, and that may explain their, uh, their uh, evident impairment. Uh, at, at the time of driving, but these these two pieces really uh, are complementary. You can't infer impairment from uh, the concentration in the blood.